just start taking my own guidance. Yeah. So like, uh, So how how like was you spar? Like was it hard? You it get out the mud? It was like it was like we was mid clay and different. I ain't from the spent to you like my mom when she was single, you know what I'm saying? My mom do hair, she was self employed. Yeah. So it's like I went without sometimes, mm -hmm. but I'm wasn't tripping because whatever I wanted, in the long run my mama would try to go get it from me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know, if I if she didn't go get it, she'll tell me ways to hustle to go get it. Yeah. Like, oh, if you want this, you gotta work for it. You for the just, you know what I'm saying? Go work here, go do that, go do this. Like, go try to go cut somebody's grass, go try to watch somebody's car or something. But, like, I wouldn't say spoiled because there's a lot of people I went to school with, came with the fresh kicks every day, pulling up in the Royce whips, you know what I'm saying? Doing it. And I'd be like, damn, I don't wanna be one of them, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I can say, in a way, I was spoiled to where, like, my mama made me grateful. She did what she can. Yeah. So, like, whatever she did for me, I was, you know, yeah. I was grateful. So did your daddy teach you like how to be a man or anything? Like I ain't have him coming up. Yeah. I remember my by the time I met my dad, I was already a man. Right. See, cause I ain't gonna lie. If I wasn't man enough to talk to my dad and sit down and talk to him about the whole situation of us not being in each other's life, I still been a little boy, but that's when I knew I was man enough. Yeah. So what's some things you learned in the streets on your own? How to survive. Survive. <laughs> so was it hard, like trying to survive? Yeah, yeah, it's really hard trying to survive because, like, like I said, when you got a dream, you trying to invest in the funds you is getting, you gonna risk the funds on the shit you passionate about when you really should be having the responsibilities. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know, I look at it like priorities, but like shit, I prioritize my music the first thing. That's what I prioritize. That's the only thing I'm gonna do. So then, some nights I done been broke as hell out here trying to find out where I'm gonna sleep at that night. Like, call a friend, like, man, let me sleep with y'all husband. I ain't gonna know where to go tonight. Y'all got some to eat over there. You know what I'm saying? Well, this type of shit, like, it, it taught me how to survive. Because at first, when I was staying with my mama, you know what I'm saying? Well, you got your mama, she, you know, my mama only child, you know, she on nursery and take care of you. But when me and my mama had fell out, when I had dropped out of school, it was like a whole different ball game. I ain't never experienced this shit. This shit really turned me into a man. I ain't know how to do it, but I got to do it, though. So, did you ever have a nine to five job? Yeah. You my there. first job was my first job was race trade. But my grandfather got a uh, a poster shop. And I'd go in there and work with him trying to make some extra money. So I'd be trying to do interior stuff too. Cause that's his trade. I try to pick it up, but my attention span too short, man. I try to, you know. So you still work at uh race trade? No, that was in high school. Mm. But then I jumped after, after the high school shit, I, I jumped into the chemical plants. I was making that was a lot of money. I ain't never seen that much money. I want to pay check like coming out of high school. You know, the chemical job and shit like that, but I ain't gonna lie, people, that's like the peak of Baton Rouge. Like, when you see niggas in Baton Rouge got money, you think about the plant or you think about dope. Yeah. That's the only two things. Or rap. You see, the ball players making out here, you know, they already chosen, so. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing I gotta say about their work shit. Like, so it's either you won't make it a be all dope, rap, or the plant. Yeah. Ain't nobody going to school out here like tomorrow. And if they do, they don't be, you know. Yeah. So what's your top five rappers in Louisiana? Oh, they ain't gotta be in order, just name them. Friend of Gold number one. Yeah. Uh no DRG. I don't call it DRG. Young boy. Yeah. Kevin Gates, Fredo. How many of those folks? Yeah. Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. I really don't put Lil Wayne in like them top, like in like I don't compare them to like Young Boy them because they two different rappers. You know but I'm talking about like as I seen coming out of Louisiana, yeah. like that's really who really love like you know what I'm saying. That's who really when you hear Louisiana, you think about that. You think about Gates, Fredo, Young Boy. In my mind, friend of the course, but and Wayne, that shit. Wayne was like one of the hottest niggas back in the days. Yeah. Still is like that nigga go there, you don't go double. So I think about it like that. Cause you don't get like I said, every other year you get a rapper. So out them top five rappers you just named, who you relate? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who you relate to the most? Shit. I say probably young boy because we in the same like yeah. era. Like the same age era, the same time period and shit like that. For that street shit he be having going on, I don't really too much know about that, but like mentally, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I be feeling that shit real tough. Yeah. yeah. 
So what's the scariest thing you ever you seen a witness in the streets? I ain't gonna lie. It's a lot of shit. I mean, as far as being caught up without my gun and bullets flying, well, ain't, ain't shit, ain't really had shit to do with me, but like, I just feel, I don't feel safe without my gun to be on. So anything that take place, there's too much going on, I don't really have too much mind of what's going on, knowledge of it. I don't be scared, but my nerves be bad. Yeah. I just seen some fucked up shit though, but I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, so what's your top, uh, what's your top, Five top goals in life right now, like um to make sure my little boy that's on the way straight. One before I leave this earth, make sure my mama's straight. To make sure my whole family's straight. That's what three. Yeah, that's two. Um, we get rich as hell. Not even rich, wealthy. Okay. And like said, be you know be considered one of the goals that come out of Louisiana. Yeah. To be honest, ain't really too much I want. Mean, I just Take care of the ones I love, have a lot of money, do what I want. Uh, do you plan on starting a record label? If I get big enough, yeah, because I run across a lot of artists in Louisiana that got talent, but I don't be having the money myself or I ain't in the door myself to put them on. Yeah. So when I get to that, you know, to that level to where I got bread and I can sign people, mm -hmm. I'm most definitely gonna do that. Okay. So do you got any uh like features with any rappers around here? Uh I ain't really too much tapping to the features, but I got a feature with Khalil Vegas. Khalil yeah, Vegas? Yeah, he hard. I, I, he, he created. All right. So, uh, did you uh, plan on being a YouTuber? You ever thought about that? I tried it before. I tried it once before. He tried to make me tapping into it. I tried it. He been pranking me too, and they been wanting me to do revenge videos. So, yeah. I been wanting to tap into the YouTube, but I been trying to, you know, take being an artist and see That's my. That's my heart see that. I mean, DDG did it. Like he was a YouTuber that he turned to an artist, but you know. But he was he was a couple years into, you know, YouTube. Like I'd watch him yeah. drop out of college and get a rape before he started rapping. It's like, you know, really, you know, started doing all this before he became a big rapper, like started doing all that. So like that was his heart So I feel like I believe in people should stick to their heart seat, but I mean I try to be versatile, but I do want to take him seriously as an artist. How did uh, COVID-19 affect you? Oh man, I ain't lying, it messed me up because I'm about to have my first big show down here. Um, shout out to DJ Bustle too. DJ Bustle was gonna put me on this little uh, platform when I had, I had this first move to Houston. And he about, to, he about to put me on a platform to where I perform and open up for the dirt. Mm -hmm. And um, I was gonna open up for the dirt and I was gonna be on the, on a platform to uh, I perform with 7th Street Carlos, some people from New Orleans and a girl named Treaty or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that would be my first like actual big, you know, yeah. you know, stamping in the city. And then, you know, as I'm you know, I'm turned up, this is what I'm watching, I'm turned up, I'm ready for it, you know, so I'm finally get to show my talent to the city instead of just on the on the internet. Mm -hmm. And boom, everything started getting canceled. Back to back to back to back. I'm like, damn, I'm just gonna tear it down like that. So it kinda it, it affected a lot. I was depressed on that time, because I was like, man, this is what I really be putting my time into, this is what I you know be putting my thoughts into. And then COVID is gonna come and just rub me out, you know. This shit made me mad as hell. So they uh, never thought about rescheduling? I feel like it was in the moment with them. Like, it was like, all right, I see him coming up, I see him doing the thing, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a banger. You gotta think about it. Through all the months passing, yeah, I'm still working, but they got other niggas working too. Yeah. And I ain't go, you know, I ain't in no competition with nobody, but I should do anybody that I'm working right now because I'm a bullshit, but you know, that was just a little time. You know, opportunities come every day, you know, you wake up. So hopefully, you know. I get some more opportunities. But I've been keeping in touch with them. Do you plan on moving out of Baton Rouge or you, you staying this one? Uh, I met a little boy in Houston, so yeah, I'm most definitely gonna leave. I'm gonna leave, go back to Houston. Oh, your little boy is? Oh, he ain't here yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he on the way. Uh -huh. He ain't my first boy. So that's your first child? Yeah. And I made that during COVID, so that really affected me. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. Uh, uh, my kid, you got anything to say? You got nothing to say? Uh, hey. Man, look, just give me your social media. You know, tell them where they, uh, they, where they can find you at. Instagram. Man, my social media is g4l.frankthegoat, but when you spell the, put D8. Don't put T-H-E, because mm -hmm. it's not going to pop up. But you can find me on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, SoundCloud, any streaming platform. I'm trying to push all my music on streaming platforms, so 
you know, y'all can go tap me in, you know, see what I'm rocking with. Yeah.